Well, hello again, and welcome back to GetChemistryHealth.com. My name is Dr. Kent, and in this lesson, we're going to discuss polyatomic ions. Now, you might recall a previous lesson on monoatomic ions that dealt with ions formed from just a single atom, so monoatomic. This lesson is going to focus on polyatomic ions, on ions that are formed from many atoms. Now, before we get too far into this, I highly encourage you to follow the link below here and download a PDF from GetChemistryHelp.com that really summarizes a lot of the rules and the patterns that I'm going to show you on how to name polyatomic ions. Now, before I show you any of those, though, I just got to admit there are some polyatomic ions you're just going to have to memorize. They really don't follow much in the way of patterns. So depending on your class and your instructor, they may ask you to memorize some or all or even more than this. But your best bet with any of these is just your friend flashcards. So if you have to memorize these, go ahead and just put C2H3O2 negative on the front and acetate on the back. Zero for two negative on the front and chromate on the back and just memorize them. But fortunately, there are many others that I can show you patterns and rules for so you can name dozens of other polyatomics without having just to flat out memorize them. So first, let's look here at the periodic table. Now, the polyatomic ions typically form from the nonmetals. And the nonmetals that are most important are these right here I'm highlighting. So these nonmetals like to combine with oxygen to make a series of negatively charged ions or anions. So since they're combining with oxygen and they're making anions, we call them the oxyanions. Now there are a few rules and patterns that I can show you though that tries to determine how many oxygens these nonmetals combine with. And the ones I want to show you are called the 8s ions. So all of these will end in 8. So boron will make borate. Carbon will make carbonate. Nitrogen will make nitrate. Chlorine will make chlorate, etc. So let's go over here and look at these 8 ions. So borate, BO3, 3 negative. Carbonate, CO3, 2 negative. Nitrate, NO3 negative. Phosphate, PO4, 3 negative and so on. Now when you first look, there doesn't appear to be much in the way of patterns, but there are a few. For example, if I highlight this square in the middle, how many oxygens do all of these polyatomic ions have? Well, they all have four, don't they? How many oxygens do all of the eight polyatomics on the outside have? Well, all of these eights have three. So there's one pattern for you. What's the charge? Well, there are a few patterns here, too. Notice all of the ones here in the first column are all one negative. The ones in the second column are two negative. The ones in the third column from the right are three negative. Now, there aren't any polyatomics that form with fluorine, and there aren't any that form with oxygen, but the first one there is is one negative. The second one there is is two negative. The third one there is, is three negative. And one last pattern I could show you is, if you look down a group like this, if you know chlorine is three oxygens and a negative, well, right under it, bromine, three oxygens and a negative is bromate. Iodine, three oxygens and a negative is iodate. How about sulfur and selenium? Well, if you know sulfate is four oxygens and two negative, then selenate is four oxygens and two negative. So just the way this repeats, so does this one. How about phosphorus and arsenic? Well, phosphate, four oxygens, three negative. Arsenate, four oxygens, three negative. Okay, so once you know how to name the eights, then I can show you a few simple rules that can multiply this many times over. So for example, the ones I just shown you were the eights, the ones right here, the ones that end in the suffix eight. So, for example, chlorate. Chlorate, we saw, was ClO3 negative. Well, if I look on this chart, this shows the increasing number of oxygen atoms. This says if I add an oxygen atom to that formula, then it becomes per whatever the root is, 8. So, chlorate, what would per 
chlorate be? Well, I would add an oxygen to it. So chlorate with ClO3 negative, perchlorate would be ClO4 negative. Well, how about chlorite? Okay, well, chlorite tells me one less oxygen. So chlorite, if I want one less, must be ClO2 negative. How about hypochlorite? Well, hypochlorite is another less oxygen. Now we're down to two less oxygens than the eight. So hypochlorite would be ClO negative. Okay, so let's just go through and practice a few of these. So what's the sulfite ion? So I'm looking for ite. Okay, well sulfate, if you have your PDF in front of you, or if you remember, sulfate is in that center box, so four oxygens. It's in that second column, so two negative. So sulfate is four, two negative. Sulfite would have one less oxygen, so it must be SO3, two negative. How about hypophosphite? Okay, so hypophosphite. So we're looking for this one down here. Well, phosphate, phosphorus is in that center box, so it's got four oxygens, and it's three columns over from the right, so it's three negative. Well, now we're all the way down here, so that means we've lost two oxygens. So hypophosphite, so the PO4 must be PO2, but still three negative. The charge doesn't change, only the number of oxygens changes. How about perbromate? So now we're up here on this one, per eight. Well, that means that we gained an oxygen. Well, what's bromate? Bromate's on the right-hand side, on the outside that box, so three oxygens. It's just in that first column, so one negative. So we're going up here to perbromate, so instead of BRO3 negative, now we add an oxygen, so it must be BRO4 negative. How about one more, nitrite? Okay, just ite. Okay, nitrite tells me one less oxygen than nitrate. So what's nitrate? Well, nitrogen is outside that center box, so it only has three oxygens, and it's the first one in that row, so it's one negative. So nitrite tells me it's got one less oxygen, so instead of NO3, it would be NO2 negative. Now let's try a few going the other way. What would IO2 negative be? Okay, well, what do you know for iodine? What's the eight? What's iodate? Well, iodate, iodine's on the outside, so three oxygens in that first column, so one negative. That's iodate. So what's IO2? Oh, that has one less oxygen. So this must be iodite ion. How about ASO2, three negative? Okay, AS, arsenic is in that center box, so it normally has four oxygens, and it's three columns over from the right, so it's three negative, but we're at ASO2, so we've lost two oxygens, so we're down here. So instead of arsenate, now we're at hypoarsenite, so this would be the hypo arsenite ion. How about SeO3 two negative? Okay, well what's selenium normally do for the eight? Well, it is in that center box, so four oxygens. It's two columns over from the right, so two negative, so that would be selenate. We have three, so that means from four to three we've lost one, so we've gone to selenite ion. Now another way to make polyatomic ions is by taking the ones I just shown you and adding a hydrogen ion to it or just H plus. So for example, let's say I had carbonate. Carbonate is CO3 two negative. That's just the carbonate ion. Well, hydrogen carbonate would just be like I added an H plus to it. So if I added an H plus to carbonate, that would become HCO3. The two negative and the positive will combine to be a single negative. So this would be hydrogen carbonate ion. What if I had sulfate? Well, sulfate is SO4, 
to negative. So what would hydrogen sulfate be? Well, just think of it like adding an H+. So hydrogen sulfate would be HSO4, but two negative and positive would combine to be a single negative. So that would be the hydrogen sulfate ion. Now this even works with monoatomic ions like we saw in a previous lesson. So for example, sulfide, just sulfur by itself, S2 negative, that would be sulfide. So what would hydrogen sulfide be? Let's just write that first, hydrogen sulfide. Well, just think of it like you took sulfide and you added an H plus to it. So that would become HS. The two negative and the positive would combine to be negative. How about phosphate? Well, phosphate is three negative. So in this case, we could actually add one or two hydrogens to it and it would still remain a negative charge. If I added one hydrogen to it, it would become HPO4 two negative. If I added two hydrogens to it, it would become H2PO4, now just a single negative. But they're both still polyatomic ions. So this one I would call hydrogen phosphate. This one with two hydrogens I would call dihydrogen phosphate. And sometimes, just to clarify that there's only one, some people will call this monohydrogen, but not always. So if you just hear hydrogen, you can assume they mean one. Otherwise, they might call it monohydrogen for one or dihydrogen for two. Okay, so let's go through and do a few examples of these. So hydrogen hyposulfite, so hydrogen tells me we're at an H+. Hyposulfite, that tells me we're down here. So I need to figure out what sulfate is. That's always the place to start. Well, sulfate is SO4 2 minus. So hyposulfite means I went down here and I lost two oxygens. So instead of SO4, I'd have SO2, but still two negative. So if I combine that hydrogen ion with SO2 two negative, what do I get? Well, I get HSO2, but now just a single negative. How about hydrogen selenide? Hydrogen, H plus, selenide. Oh look, ide. It's not ite, it's ide. So ide tells me it just came from the non-metal by itself. So this is one of those monoatomic ions we discussed in a previous lesson. Well, selenium, if you look on your periodic table, is two away from the noble gases, so it likes to be two negative. So if I combine those two, I would get HSC, single negative. That would be hydrogen selenide ion. How about dihydrogen borate ion? Well, dihydrogen, so two hydrogens. What's borate? So we're looking here. Boron is outside of that inner square, so it has three oxygens. But it's the third column over, so it's three negative. So if I combine these together, two H pluses and a three negative, I'm going to get H2BO3, and what's the charge? Well, two positives and three negative gives me a single negative. So that would be dihydrogen borate ion. Okay, let's do a couple the other way. Hydrogen, sulfur, oxygen, four of those, and a negative. So we know this part was an H+. Plus. So what would the rest of it be? Well, if I took an H+, plus out of that, that would leave me an SO4 2 minus. What's SO4 2 minus called? Well, SO4 2 minus is sulfate. So this must be hydrogen sulfate. How about H2ASO3 negative? H2 tells me I added two H pluses. So what would have been left if I, if I took away two H pluses? Well, that would have left me ASO3. But now my negative would have been two larger, so it would have become three negative. 
Well, what's that? Well, I'm not sure, but I know arsen arsenic normally makes arsenate. That's in that center box. So it normally has four oxygens and a three negative. But I'm at three oxygens, so I'd be down here. So what is that? Well, that's arsenite. So what do I have? I have two hydrogens and an arsenite, so I would call it dihydrogen arsenite. And we should write the word ion technically. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed that long lesson on polyatomic ions. For much more practice with naming ionic compounds, please come visit me at getchemistryhelp.com. We will see you again next time. Thank you.